Hello everyone, Dan here from the Next Tissue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Titans Beast World number one. This is a new book from DC Comic. The epic event starts here. Let's take a look at the creative team before we get into this book. This book is written by Tom Taylor with art by Ivan Reese. Danny Mickey on inks, Brad Anderson on colors, letters by Wes Abbott, uh, and a plethora of really cool variant covers. We'll see some at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. Uh, so, what is this book? Uh, the biggest threat to the DC universe is Beast Boy. Can the Titans save the world and their teammate superstars Tom Taylor and Ivan Reese team up for an unprecedented Titan crossover? Clawing its way out of the pages of Titans comes an unprecedented threat to the DC universe. Superman, Wonder Woman, Starfire, they are all powerless to stop the Necrostar from ending all life on Earth. The only hero who can save them is Beast Boy. With Nightwing, Raven, Cyborg, and the Titans beside him, can Garfrey Logan rise to battle an ancient evil? What will Amanda Waller do to take advantage of the situation as millions of people are changed into rampaging creatures? Can humanity survive the all-powerful heroes and villains transform into ferocious beasts? Friends will fall, heroes will rise, and nothing will ever be the same again. Earth is about to become Beast World. DC Comics proudly presents the first Titans crossover as the world premier superhero team with universe shattering repercussions brought to you by this all-star team. I am very, very excited. I mean, DC definitely has a lot of hype behind this, which is very cool. But yeah, since uh, since the Titans became the premier uh, team in the DC universe, this is their biggest test so far, right? Uh, the Justice League. They died, and then it was disbanded after everything kind of what came back into place. Uh, they've been through the night terrors, but that was nothing compared to what seems to be coming from uh, from Peace World. And also to to add to all of that, we also have the looming threat of what in the hell is Amanda Waller planning? So let's talk about this issue. Uh, this issue has a lot. Like there's a lot of weight in this first opening salvo for the event. Uh, but I think the stakes are raised very quickly. I think Tom Taylor understands that he needs to make sure that people are paying attention. Uh, and he definitely goes all out. Uh, they come up with this, this Necro star that is like the, the biggest threat we may not even have ever heard of in the universe. Uh, and it is just something that has to, you know, it brings all the heroes together to try to fight it out, to try to figure out how to deal with it. Uh, it it goes in a very unconventional comic book way that it like it just does, uh, but it's a lot of fun. I think bringing the Titans specifically, Gar to the forefront, uh, it's a very exciting. I, I love Beast Boy. I think he has such uh, unexplored abilities, really, uh, that may he himself may not even be aware of. So. Very, very cool stuff. And it all happens. It all starts in space. So let's take a look at some of the preview art. Ivan Reese just, if there's one person that you can always count on to bring you great comic book action in the DC world, Ivan Reese is there. Uh, as soon as I saw his name, I knew that we were definitely going to get a, a good looking book when it comes to the action, the design. I love this stuff in space. I don't think I've seen much work in space from Reese, which looks really cool. Uh, specifically this ship landing we have this uh, uh this crazy man i'll just call him uh you know preaching out to his followers and to all these people it's a little bit of a cult vibes for sure uh but then we move on to what they're really after and what they're really after is to liberate this necro star now you don't get to see a lot of that action in the preview pages uh, but if you've seen some of the covers you've seen some of the the trailers for this uh, I think you know we're in for a treat, uh, and it is great stuff. Uh, Ivan Reeves, like I said, working very well with uh, with the full art team to deliver some really cool looking stuff. While in the meanwhile, Tom Taylor just trying to expand uh, the way that we have seen the Titans so far, and I think it does a very good job raising the stakes on this first issue. Things are left at a point where like. I don't even know what's going to happen next. So there's a full reading list for all this at the end of the issue. So make sure to take, take a look at that so you can plan out your read for this event. But I am very excited to see what happens next. 
Uh, and like I said, I'm a big fan of Beast Boy, so I want to see, you know, how is he going to deal with all this uh, and what will happen if his friends can't save him. So. Hello everyone, Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Batman 89 Echoes, number one. This is a new book from DC Comics. Let's take a look at the creative team before we get into this book. Chapter one, this is written by Sam Hamm, with art by Joe Quinones, uh, colors by Leonardo Ito, and letters by Carlos Manuel. Uh, we have multiple variant covers, which you can see some at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. This is the follow-up to the Batman 89 comic that we got. Uh, I think we got the collection this year, but it started in the year prior. So in this book, the Batman 89 sequel arrives, reuniting Sam Hem and Joe Quinones. Uh, great team, by the way. Uh, just uh, the first volume was super fun. Uh, we talked to it, uh, we talked about it a little bit on our preview and one of our lives a couple of weeks ago because we read it for our local comic book club. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, I'll put a link on that to that discussion in the in the description of this video. So uh, in this issue, you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. After Harvey Dent's crusade against Gotham and Batman, the Cape Crusader has disappeared without a trace. In his place, ordinary citizens, sin, citizens have taken the streets to root out crime. As innocents get hurt, the question on everyone's mind is the same. Where is the Batman? Sam Hamm, screenwriter of the 1989 Batman movie, and Joe Quinones, reunite for another tale in Gotham. Uh, now, as you saw from the cover, uh, like this is heavily, heavily hinting that the Scarecrow is going to be heavily involved in this scene. But I like that Sam Hamm is really uh, slow playing this uh, stuff. I think also, if you remember from the Dark Knight movie, one of the things that happened was that the Batman had inspired citizens to everyday people to kind of take up arms, you know, whether it was for the good or, or bad, uh, like, it, you know, Batman was an inspiration to some citizens uh, to stand up and defend Gotham. Uh, so when he goes missing, who's there to fill in the void? Uh, we have a lot of things lingering from the first uh, volume. I do recommend you read that first. So I will say you should, if you haven't seen the Batman 89 movie, you should. Uh, and you should also read the first volume of this Batman 89, the, the original or the, the follow-up series. Uh, feel free to watch Batman Returns. You don't have to. I'm just, I just think that'd be fun. Uh, but you don't have to, to do that. Um, but yeah, this book, once again, a lot of fun. Uh, I will say I will give you the one caveat that I had with the original book to me. It read so much better as a trade. I tried reading it in uh, single issues, which I did buy because there's some beautiful covers. Um, but once we went back and revisited for book club as a trade, uh, which I read, I read the collection that I bought for uh, Batman Day. Uh, it read a lot better, and I think this to me feels the same way because as we get to that last page of this issue, I just want to keep reading, uh, but unfortunately, I can't. So. Uh, I may tr I may wait for the trade on this, uh, but I'm really excited with everything that's been set up, right? Uh, Kenyon just really manages to capture the essence, the look and the feel of the films without doing a just one to one trying to recreate that. Uh, also, I love that Kenyon and the team managed to like sneak in little uh, Easter eggs for. Uh, things from the Batman movies, uh, which is a lot of fun, uh, including some Tim Burton stuff, maybe some stuff that's not even from the movie. So let's take a look at some of the preview art here. And as you can see, like this just looks amazing. I love that the colors are a little bit muted because that was the Tim Burton uh, aesthetic, right? The Gotham that Tim Burton brought to the screen uh, in this 89 world. It's a little bit more of muted colors, not so bright, but this is a comic book. So there's definitely some changes there, but it's still very good stuff. I really like, I really love the way of, of the city, how it looks. Um, and this is middle page, kind of what I was saying. Very reminiscent of that opening scene for the Dark Knight in the garage where you see those fake Batman. So, yeah, very cool stuff. We get to see some characters come back 
from the first series. So like I mentioned, you definitely want to check this out. And we are introduced to uh, Professor Jonathan Crane. Uh, so you know things are definitely, definitely going to get uh, pretty scary for someone at least. Uh, so very excited for this. Uh, I also, one thing I forgot uh, to mention is that I love how some of these characters really hint at who they may end up being in this world. Uh, you know, I don't want to go too deep into it, but if you see Barbara Gordon, uh, you may notice that her color scheme seems very familiar. So really, really cool stuff. Uh, anyways, uh, highly recommend this. Uh, I can't wait for this whole collection to be out so I can actually go back and read it all. But there's some really fun stuff, really cool covers. Uh, and it's just really great to revisit this world. Um, so, yeah. I love it. I love that stuff. So, Hello, everyone. Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Action Comics 1059. This is a new book from DC Comics. So, as you can see here, we have two backup stories. I don't have preview art for, but let me talk about the creative team in those stories. Uh, we have Secret Identity Part 2, written by Jin Liu Yang, with art by Victor Vogdanovich, uh, colors by Mike Spicer, and letters by Dave Sharp. We also have a John Kent story, A Heart in Metropolis, written by Dan Parent, with art by Marguerite Sauvage, letters by Dave Sharp. Uh, so those two stories will be in the back of the book. Uh, so I'm very excited to see that, specifically... Uh, I was specific, I'm excited for you guys to see that. Uh, the Marjorie Savage. I love Marjorie's art. So it's always really fun uh, when I get to see it in a Superman book. So in the main story of this book, which is written by Philip Kennedy Johnson with art by Eddie, Eddie Barrows and Ebra Ferreira. We have colors by Matt Herms and once again, letters by Dave Sharp. Uh, tons of variant covers you'll see towards the end of the video. So in this issue... Protecting Metropolis in a battle royale for the ages, as the forces of Nora Stone's Blue Earth take control of Metropolis, Superman dusts of his World War weapons and armors alongside with steel to take their city back. Can even the House of El defeat this uh, new potent threat? Meanwhile, the shocking true identities of Nora Stone's mysterious family are revealed, building to a battle royale for the ages. A pivotal issue not to be missed. Yeah, there's a lot of answers that we finally get here. Um, we also have the conclusion to, like I mentioned, Secret Identity, uh, but the, the backup story. And also we have uh, a new story for John Kent like you've never seen him before. So a lot happening in this uh, Action Comics issue. I feel like Action Comics has been one of the books that has really raised uh, its standing at the top of my uh, list of comic books to read on a weekly, on a monthly basis. Uh, I was not usually somebody that would read action comics month to month, but uh, ever since they brought Superman back from War World, uh, there's just something really fun there that I don't ever, I don't want to miss it. Um, I will say there was a plot point that was left off in the last issue that I wanted to see maybe go a little bit longer. Uh, but they kind of cut it off here. It makes sense why they cut it off, but I wanted to play with the idea a little bit longer. But Philip Kennedy Johnson is just bringing some really fun stories. I love that you know we get to see how does Superman continue to fight with his, with his with his powers lost? Who is North Stone? Who like can they even stop Blue Earth? Do people even want to be saved from, from Blue Earth? Um, it is, it's just very interesting, very exciting to see all these things happening. And of course we have some amazing artists. Now I, unfortunately I cannot tell you the difference between whose artist, whose I'm not familiar enough with, um, with either Barros or Ferreira's art. Uh, but I think to its advantage, they both have a very similar style that doesn't feel jarring when you're reading these pages. So that's, I mean, that's very interesting to find two artists that can work together in a book and almost seamlessly get you through the story. Sometimes when you have multiple artists or fill-in artists and it's not done for a specific effect, uh, it's very noticeable. But in this case, we have some really cool action. Uh, of course, we have Superman showing up with his armor, as we saw him at the end of the last issue. Uh, and then him teaming up with Steel, just like 
that's just so much fun. Like both Man of Steel wrapped up in the suits of armor. Uh, very, very cool stuff. I, I just, I love it. I love the look. I love that Superman keeps his cape uh, and that he has to confront enemies that are using his powers, right? Uh, so, yeah, just so much fun. Uh, really cool stuff. I will be, um, I will be missing missing Philip Kennedy Johnson when he's done in this run because uh, I believe that it's coming to an end very soon. Uh, because I know we'll have some different artists or different creators kind of jump in and out of the action comics title for a little while. Uh, but hopefully, we'll see uh, Kennedy Johnson come back to Superman or the Superman family world. Uh, in the future. So, hello everyone, they're here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Amazon's Attack number two. This is a new book from DC Comics, so let's take a look at the creative team. This book is written by Josie Campbell with art by Vasco Georgia, uh, Alex Gumaras and Colors, letters by Becca Carey. And we have some amazing covers that you can see towards the end of the issue. So I really like that this book, tangentially with the Wonder Woman book, are both dealing with the fallout of what happened after the the Amazon uh, killed somebody in a bar and or killed a bunch of people in a bar. And now how the government and the world is changing their view on Amazons. And that's really what we have most of this book, right? So it is not only Wonder Woman now that is being prosecuted and uh, and threatened and, and you know, like being deported or expulsed from different places. Like it is now every single Amazon is now under threat. So in this issue, the Amazons take Manhattan as rumors of the Amazons true nature spread far and wide. Our heroes take Manhattan. Turns out the Big Apple isn't the only apple to worry about as fruits from the goddess of discord enter the scene and poison the minds of men. Will a ragtag group of Amazons ever be able to find shelter from the cruel world that preys on their downfall? Yeah, this is like all odds are against our group of Amazons that were falling around. Um, I do like the inclusion of Mary Marvel a lot. I know she's been recently, specifically because of uh, Josie Campbell kind of following that through line. Um, you know, Mary Marvel has been really following, like, she's been working together with the Amazons. Uh, so that's really fun to kind of follow that. Uh, the book very smartly just gives you a an overview of the world in, like, this uh, news organization discussion type of place. Uh, you'll see some in the preview pages. Um, so let's, let's pull those up. Uh, and as you can see here, like, this just looks like one of those new shows that you would see like a round table discussion of the topics, right? Uh, and, you know, these things sway a lot of opinions. They're discussing what's going on. Uh, and and sometimes the things that they're saying, it, because we know what what's kind of going on, like, it's dumb, right? Like, who would not want to be friendly with the mascara and the Amazons? But, you know, the public is scared. They don't know what they're doing. They're doing stupid things decisions as you can see here even somebody like uh, veronica kale who has had run-ins with the amazons who's been helped by the amazons in the past including wonder woman uh, even she turns against them so like and then of course we follow our group as they kind of they're kind of put in a bad position as they hit manhattan because there's somebody pulling a lot of strings to make them look bad uh so that's kind of what happens in this issue so can they even get away? So yeah, it is just really cool stuff, really fun. As you saw, some beautiful art. Uh, I didn't have a lot of preview art for some of the bigger fights, but there's a lot of interesting action in this book. I think uh, Georgia manages to give us some really fluid and dynamic fights, which is always a lot of fun. Uh, and just the interpersonal relationship between the group of Amazons that we're following around uh, is great. So. I'm very excited to see what happens next and follow this along. I've really been enjoying what uh, what Campbell's been doing, uh, and I really like this new art team on this issue. So, or I guess for the series, it's it's the same artist uh, as the first issue. So, if you have read this book, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. As always, thank you for watching, everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions. 
TV recaps, all that fun stuff in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.